Uh, hey guys, Louie here. I thought you'd want to see a pickup I just got at the LCS. Uh, this is a, a little silver bar. Uh, 82 pounds. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is Shipwreck Silver. Check out this bar. I know Stock Jockey is going to love this one uh, if you haven't seen it already. So this silver bar where it weighs 82 troy pounds was recovered from the bottom of the ocean in the, uh, the recovery of the shipwreck of the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, which is uh, a Spanish shipwreck. I thought I'd uh, read you excerpts from the article, which uh, I find pretty interesting. I'll tell you the value of this, uh, this piece here uh, in just a little bit. So, uh, I'm sorry, that's Coin World, not Coin Week. So, large, heavy silver bar from the Atocha wreck, the ingot from the Spanish Colonial America treasure, okay, ingot from Spanish Colonial America treasure that went down in 1622 off of Key West. The wreck of the Nuestra Sonora de Atocha is argu arguably the most famous shipwreck discovered in modern America. So when items salvaged from the Florida wreck are sold at auction, it's not noticeable. Daniel Frank Sedwick, November 12 and 13 Treasure and World Coin Auction, uh, number 20, feature a silver bar from the 1622 wreck, weighing in at 82 troy pounds. The Atocha is today the most famous ship in the 28-vessel convoy that was headed back to Spain in September 1622 after stopping in ports in what are modern-day Colombia, Panama, and Cuba. As reported in the January 7, 2008 issue of Coin World, Spain had an urgent need for the riches extracted from the New World, since Spain was indebted to international investors. Delays in the arrival of gold and silver would have a catastrophic effect on Spain's line of credit. Shipments were relied upon. Spain often compensated investors from new, with New World silver, gold, and other commodities that weren't even mined yet. Payments were often extended for over several years. The silver haul from the Spanish Colonial America for the 1622 fleet was so large that it took a reported two months to count and load, and the fleet ended up leaving six weeks late on September 4th. The delay would prove fatal, since it ensured that the fleet would sail into the path of a fierce hurricane on September 6th, about 35 miles west of Key West. During the storm, 20 of the ships were sent to the depths of the ocean, between the dry Tortugas and the Florida Keys. Five people survived the wreck of the Atocha and were rescued, but the wreck itself was scattered after, her, after a hurricane hit the site one month later. Efforts to retrieve the treasure began immediately, as Spain sent several vessels to the area, but only half of the treasure from the sister ship was recovered. The treasure of the Atocha would not surface, literally, until starting in 1971, when Salvior Mel Fisher brought up the first coin located in the wreckage. Full recovery occurred in 1985, when more than 100,000 silver shield-type Cobb silver coins were found in all denominations, one real sizes and up. In addition, an estimated 1,000 silver ingots, most the size of bread loaves, were recovered from the Atocha, according to the firm. The piece highlighted in November's auction is from that hoard. The .9916 fine silver bar weighs 82 pounds, 82 troy pounds, and 7.36 ounces. The firm calls it one of the most beautiful, large Atosha bars we have ever handled, noting that it ranks among the best known. The bar was poured in Potosi in modern-day Bolivia, the center of silver mining in Spanish colonial lands, and is dated 1622. The bar measures 14 inches long, 5 inches tall, and 3 and a half inches wide. The manifest number 747 is boldly displayed in Roman numerals that are the finest, that are the finest marks and the three circular tax stamps of Philip IV, two of which are nearly full. The silver master mask is clear and the bold ownership and shipper marks are visible according to the firm. In the center is the typical double scoop assayer's bite. 
With minimal surface corrosion all over and traces of black charcoal and crevices in the sides, this is also one of the heaviest bars around, according to the Sedwick firm. The bar is accompanied by the rare, complete manifest report, which was available but not widely distributed to original purchasers when the bars were first sold. To affirm its authenticity, the silver bar is accompanied by the original Fisher photo certificate, serial number 85AS451. The ingot has an estimated value of thirty to $60,000. <laughs> oh man, that's a fantastic article. Although this, um, apparently there is a, a great deal of suffering that has accompanied this wonderful bar. And uh, here's a quick article from uh, the people that uh, rescued the bar from the depths. Uh, in this article from Ancient Origins, the magazine, here is a picture of the um, ship or one of the, the ships. Um, but what's interesting here is uh, the people who have, been, who have recovered it, uh, there is uh, some of the treasure in the raw. Uh, we already read about that. But um, let's see. Uh, Spanish salvagers searched for the Nuestra Sonora for 60 years, however, they never found it. The mission to find the Atocha and her treasure became the fixation of a chicken farmer turned deep sea diver named Mel Fisher, who searched doggedly for the treasure for 16 years from 1969. Over the years, Fisher and his crew recovered small pieces of the treasure, which ignited hope that they were getting warmer. And they were. In 1973, Fisher found three silver bars which matched the weights and tally numbers found on the manifest of the Nuestra um, de Atocha. Then, two years later, Fisher's son found five bronze cannons that were identified to be cargo of the Atocha. However, in a tragic turn of events, Fisher's son and wife and Rick Gage were killed just days later when one of the salvage boats capsized. Despite the tragedy, Fisher and his crew pe persevered with their lifelong mission to recover the Nuestra de Atocha. In July 1985, Kane Fisher sent a message to his father's headquarters. Put away the charts. We've found the main pile. Ecstatic crew members described the, the find as looking like a reef of silver bars. Within days, the shipper's marks on the bars were matched to the Atocha's cargo manifest, confirming Kane's triumphant claim. At long last, the wreck's mother load had been found, and the excavation of what was widely referred to as the shipwreck of the century began. But uh, how sad that uh, he lost family members during this quest uh, since Mel Fisher's amazing find in 1985, artifacts worth around half a billion dollars have already been bought, brought to the surface, making it among the most valuable shipwrecks ever discovered. The artifacts from Atocha are now part of the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society Museum's collection. Uh, I'm guessing he's a rich man. A portion of Atocha's lower hull was examined and recovered and stored in a lagoon at the Florida Keys Community College, making it accessible to researchers. The most valuable part of the ship, the stern castle, where the captain's cabin would have concealed the most precious cargoes of all, has yet to be located. Well, that's very, very interesting. Wouldn't you like to have that little bar in your stack? Wow, look at that thing. 80 pounds of silver and uh, what's really interesting are the hallmarks so uh, let me uh, let me uh, post the image here of the uh, the hallmarks of uh, a silver bar of the era um, there's a great article I'm gonna get to you in one second all right here we are with uh, the anatomy of a uh, Spanish uh, silver bullion bar um, this is uh, this bar uh, let's see, is this this bar? Uh, this bar is the Atocha bar. Yeah, this is the exact bar that we just showed you. So uh, let's go ahead and check these out. So this mark here, Sigla EA, okay. Foundry date, P1622, there we go. There is the ingot number, 767, for those of you that read uh, Roman numerals. 
um, the assayer's bite. So I guess the assayer gets a little chunk to play with. That's how we determined that that was, uh, what did they say, 0 0.9916. And here is uh, the uh, owner's sigla. I guess that's their avatar or signature. Quinto Q3, don't know what that is offhand. Here is the assayer's mark. There's the fineness. Oh, so they actually stamp the fineness into the bar. Very interesting. And I'm not sure what Quinto is. A mark of the... I'm not sure. And the Silver Master's mark, that is who poured this. Okay, so there's a... There's somebody who was pouring back in the 1600s. Bet he had quite a fun job. So there you go, eight, uh, 80 pounds of silver and they're all the distinguishing marks. If you see something like this laying around, you might want to pick it up, guys. All right, this is Louis signing out. Thanks to all the sources for this uh, great information. I'll put links to everything down below. Bye now.